Last time Gonzaga was in the title game, Hubert Davis was on the other bench with Roy Williams as an assistant. North Carolina won a title and now Hubert Davis is a new head coach. North Carolina Tar Heels taking over just a few days after Roy Williams announced his retirement. Hubert's been on the sideline with Roy the last several years after playing in North Carolina under Dean Smith. He still holds the program record for career three-point percentage. So uh, there's some guys out there that you'd like to up that number a little bit. Uh, Tar Heels <laughs> been great inside. Maybe a little more shooters at, uh, under Hubert's tutelage coming up. 12 years in the NBA, seven years with us on college game day, and the last nine as an assistant under Roy Williams. And we're most delighted to be joined by the new head coach of the Tar Heels, Hubert Davis. Hubert, congratulations. And uh, so, wait, let me rephrase this. Coach, what was it like when you, uh, when you, first, got, when you first got that word and when the first uh, offer came to you that you had the opportunity to be the head coach at the place that you love so much? Well, you know, Reese, it's, it, you know, it's been a great day, but it's also been very emotional. You know, it's been emotional starting off with, you know, Coach Williams retiring last Thursday. And, you know, over the last nine years, I've had the pleasure of working for Coach Williams. You know, he gave me a chance. He gave me an opportunity. And over the last nine years, I've had a front row seat at being able to be in these kids' lives and just help them on a daily basis be the best that they can be on the court, off the court, and in the classroom. And the last nine years, Reese, you know, I, I haven't had a job. It's been missionary work. It's been an act of service. And I'm just so humbled and appreciative and thankful to have been in that position, but it was given to me by that chance and that opportunity that, that Coach Williams gave me. You know, I've, I've told him this a number of times, even before he retired. You know, he was the best person for this university, the best person for this community and program and team. And um, I can't thank him enough for the opportunity that he had given me to be around him for nine years and to have this chance um, to be a head coach. This is, you know, Reese, this is something that I wanted. This is something where I wanted to be. I always wanted to be a coach, but I always wanted to be it here at North Carolina. You know, I have a passion and a desire to walk the same path as Coach Smith and Coach Guthridge and Coach Williams, but I'm also enthusiastic and ready to go to be able to do it with my own personality and in my shoes. And uh, it's just been a great day, an unbelievable celebration, and the text messages and the calls that I've gotten from people and friends have been incredibly encouraging. And I'm just so excited to be able to be in this position, and I'm ready to go. Well, Hubert, after coaching the JV team for so many years, you're going to have a lot more people at your press conferences. That's going to be. <laughs> and I know, I know it's a little early for this question, but I'm going to ask it anyway. When, when you think of style of play with North Carolina, it's, it's the Carolina way, the secondary break and all that stuff. How, how do you anticipate your style of play as you take over as the head coach of the Tar Heels? Well, you know, there'll be a lot of similarities, Jay. I mean, you know, I believe in the way that Coach Smith and Coach Guthridge and Coach Williams play the game and approach the game. And the reason being is, is I, I've experienced it. I've played it. I believe in it. I know it. And it's the right way to play. And so in terms of the foundation of who Carolina is, that won't change. You know, I mentioned before that I've got to do it with my own personality, with my own shoes, and that's really important to me. I know that the game has changed. I know, um, you know, kids are more versatile. I know kids have gone away from posting up guys, and it, people from an offensive standpoint want to be open and want to play the game the right way, and that, that's what we have. We've got great kids that want to get after it on both ends of the floor, and uh, the foundation of who Carolina is and the success that they've had over the years is not going to change. It's just going to be me in charge, doing it my way, in my own shoes, with my personality, and I'm just honored and excited about doing that. Yerber, congratulations. I know it took you nine years to get cleansed from sitting next to Billis. I understand, <laughs> I understand that. <laughs> well, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't get the pleasure of being asked, uh, asked a question by you and then you answering your own question. <laughs> I know you sat next to Phyllis. <laughs> You've been poisoned. <laughs> the difference between you and Digger, he can ask a question, but he couldn't answer his own question. <laughs> well, as we move forward, Coach Williams, uh, when you received the job and got the job offer, what, did he give you any bit of advice? 
Yeah, he's given me a number of advice. I mean, he's given me advice in terms of, you know, who to hire as a staff. He's given me advice of how to handle the players. But, you know, the advice that Coach Williams has given me has been lived by example. You know, the things that I've talked about with Coach Williams, him being the great coach, not only for this team, but for this university and this program and this community is by the way that he walked. You know, both things that Coach Williams and I love, we love this university. You know, this is something, uh, Coach Greenberg, that, you know, I've loved this university since I was four years old. I mean, you know that my uncle Walter Davis played here and starred here 74 through 77. And since the first time that I stepped foot on campus at four years old, even though I grew up right outside of Washington, D.C., I've always considered Chapel Hill my home. You know, I always grew up and the only thing that I wanted was a chance and an opportunity uh, to come here and to play here. You know, unlike most of the guys on our team, I wasn't a high school All-American. You know, I had only two scholarship offers heading into my senior year. One was um, against George Mason and Rick Barnes was the head coach at the time. And the other one was George Washington and John Kuster was the head coach and he was a former player and teammate of my uncle. And it just didn't look like I was going to get that chance and get that opportunity to live out my dream and be a part of this program and this history. And Coach Smith and Coach Williams made an in-home visit to me. And it was much different than most in-home visits because Coach Smith told me that he thought I should go to George Mason or George Washington. You know, he didn't think that I was good enough, fast enough, quick enough, or athletic enough to play at this level. And because of the relationship that he had with my uncle, he didn't want that jeopardized that I wouldn't have the same type of, type of experience or success that my uncle had. And uh, I remember telling them in my living room that you might be right, but you won't know for sure unless you give me that chance and that opportunity. And Coach Greenberg, he left my house and didn't offer me a scholarship. And I thought my chance and my opportunity wasn't going to happen. And so two days later, he gave me a call on the phone and he said, I thought a lot about what you said and I'm going to give you that chance and that opportunity. And I committed on the spot on the phone. And, and because Coach Smith and Coach Guthridge and Coach Williams have given me this chance. Everything significant in my life has happened here. This is more than basketball. I grew up here. I played basketball here. I got an education here and graduated with a criminal justice degree. Um, I met my best friends here. I fell in love with my wife here. I became a Christian here. We got married here, bought my first house here. And when I retired from the NBA in 2004, we could live anywhere we wanted to in the country. And my wife and I decided to raise our three beautiful children here in Chapel Hill. And so this place has always been home. And the example that Coach Smith, Coach Guthridge, and Coach Williams, over the nine years that I've been an assistant coach, has put me in a position with great, great leadership. And um, I'm very proud and I'm very thankful that, uh, that I had the opportunity um, to work under Coach Williams. He's the best coach that I've ever been around, and uh, he's absolutely great, and I love him. Beautiful. Hubert, yeah, I heard that you're in need of a big. I just want to let you know that I'm available. Not sure how much eligibility Can you I shoot? have left. Can you shoot? Uh, <laughs> Can you shoot? I play my back in the basket. <laughs> we, don't need any, we don't need any screeners. No. <laughs> Phyllis, you're out. <laughs> We need some dudes. <laughs> I got you, I got you. You, you. you spoke so well about your college coaches. I was just curious. I mean, you've had a chance to be coached by the Van Gundy brothers when you were in New York, Pat Riley. How much of their influence do you feel you'll implement into your strategy, whether it be on the defensive end or the offensive end? Well, that's the piece that I'm also very thankful for, Lafonso, because – you know, yes, I've had the experience of playing for Coach Smith and Coach Guthridge and also being an assistant coach for Coach Williams over the last nine years. But, you know, the 12 years that I spent in the NBA, I've been around coaches. I played for Pat Riley, Jeff Van Gundy, uh, Rick Carlisle, Larry Brown, Doug Collins, great coaches that are absolutely fantastic. And then playing with terrific players like Patrick Ewan and John Starks and Doc Rivers. And then when I was with the Dallas Mavericks, Dirk Nowinski and Michael Finley and Steve Nash and, and Chauncey Billups with the Detroit Pistons. And I've been able to be around great players and great coaches. And then you also add on the experience that I had for seven years with ESPN. You know, one of the things that I really enjoyed was just being around different coaches, different styles, different traditions, being at practices and shoot arounds and game days 
just being able to see other traditions and how people do things. And so, you know, the experience of being able to sit down and talk to Coach Few and Coach Drew and Coach K and different coaches, Coach Patino, Coach Izzo, and see them how they ran practice are all things that I think about and all things that I've written down that will help me in my process to be the head coach here. And those are all those things are so beneficial in, in putting me in this role and allowing me to try to be successful here. Well, Coach, I think you can mark Coach K off that list now as far as getting <laughs> <laughs> uh, Hubert, congratulations. I was man. just being nice. <laughs> <laughs> We're so, we're so happy for Since you. Since I'm a number one seed, I'm just being a nice guy. <laughs> Here we're congratulations, my friend, and congratulations to, to Leslie and Elijah and Gracie and Micah, your beautiful family. Uh, congratulations. So happy for you. Wish you all the success in the world. Yes. All right. Thanks a lot, guys. All right. <laughs> Talk to you later. <laughs>